Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on slope. Our objective is to identify slope using tables and graphs. And if we were to make some predictions about what we're going to learn about slope, we're going to learn how to find the slope of a line from a graph and hopefully interpret what the slope of a line represents. Now for our real world link. Hero Comics prints on recycled paper. Good for them. The table shows the total number of pounds of recycled paper that has been used each day during the month. So day three, 36 pounds. Day five, 60 pounds. Day six, 72 pounds. Seven, 84, 12, 144. And graph the ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here to try to get these points as close as we possibly can. Now notice, our day of the month is counting by twos, two, four, six, eight. So where are we going to graph, say, days three, five, and seven? Where is three? In between two and four. So as we look for 336, well, 36 is somewhere in between 25 and 50, so we're going to be somewhere in here. And our best guess for where this is going to be can be somewhere right around here. Again, don't have to be perfect on this, just somewhat close. 560. 560 is going to be right around here. And again, 5 is in between 4 and 6. 672, we actually get to cross a line here. Yay. 672 right around here. 784 back in between, right around here. And lastly, 12144 is going to be somewhere up in this neck of the woods. So notice we don't have to be exact in our graphing, but you should be able to see on yours something that looks like a line explain why the graph is linear. Well, the points lie in a straight line. And now comes perhaps our challenge. Use two points to find the constant rate of change. Well, any two points from this line. Let's go ahead and pick 336 as point 1. And why don't we pick 560 as the other? Sometimes it's nice to work with smaller numbers. Well, let's remember now that our change in pounds, our second number were our pounds, and our first number or our days. So as we look for change of pounds, we can do this by finding 60 minus 36, which is 24. Change in days, we can find going 5 minus 3 is 2. So this is 24 over 2, which simplifies into 12 pounds per day by dividing 24 by 2. And this is the type of thing we will be doing in this lesson. Looking at our change in y, which in this case was our change in pounds, and comparing it to our changes in x's, which in this case was change in days. And so our key concept is that of slope. Slope is the rate of change between any two points on a line. 
So we're looking at our vertical change over our horizontal change, our rise, if you will, over our run. And that's sometimes what slope is referred to as, but we'll get to that in a moment. So we're looking at our change in y over our change in x. In this line, we went up 2 and over 1, up 2 over 1. So 2 over 1, which simplifies into 2. In a linear relationship, the vertical change, change in y value, per unit of horizontal change, change in x value, is always the same. The ratio is called the slope of the function. The constant rate of change, or unit rate, is the same as the slope of the related linear relationship. So if you're thinking constant rate of change seems a lot like slope here, well, in this case, with these linear relationships, it is. The slope tells you how steep the line is. The vertical change is sometimes called the rise. You think the vertical, you're going up, rising, or sometimes going down, falling. While the horizontal change is called run. You can say that slope is equal to rise over run. Count the number of units that make up the rise of the line in the graph shown above. Write this number for the numerator of the fraction below. All right. Well, if we start here, and we were to count up. Right now, we haven't moved. We're going to go up 1, 2, 3. So our rise is simply 3. Now, from this point, our run, starting here, we're at 0. We haven't moved, at least horizontally yet. Our run is going to be 1, 3. 2. So our run is equal to 2. So the slope of the line is 3 halves. In guided example 1, the table below shows the relationship between the number of seconds y it takes to hear thunder after a lightning strike and the miles x you are away from the lightning. Graph the data and find the slope. Explain what the slope represents. All right, well, we have our table 0, 0, 1, 5, 2, 10, 3, 15, 4, 20, 5, 25. And you can see where they graphed 0, 0, 1, 5, 2, 10, and so on. Then to use this graph to find the change in y's, we used this point and that point. And so our change in y, we had 25 minus 15 for the change in y's. We had 5 minus 3 for our change in x's. We simplified to 10 over 2, which is 5 over 1. So for every 5 seconds between the lightning flash and the sound of thunder, there is 1 mile between you and the lightning strike. Now do we got this? Let's find out. Graph the data about plant height for a science fair project. Then find the slope of the line. Explain what the slope represents in the work zone. All right, so we have one, one and a half, so one week, one and a half centimeters for our plant height. We have two, three, three, four and a half, and four, six. Now, if we were to try to draw a line here through these points, it might look something like that. Now, in order to calculate the slope here, let's pick two points. I'm going to pick this 2, 3, and the 4, 6. Now let's write those down. We have 2, 3, and 4, 6. 6. Now with this graph counting by 1's, there are two ways of finding our slope. The first way is just to count. If we just kind of count how far we're going up versus how far we're going over, we could count that. And so we're going up 1, 2, 3. So our rise is 3. And we're running 1, 2. 
So our slope using our properties of rise over run, we could say that it is 3 over 2, which simplifies into 1 and a half, or 1 and 5 tenths. That's one way. What if we wanted to use some kind of calculation? Well, if we look at these two points, we can calculate the change in y over the change in x. Now here are our y values. It's the 3 and the 6. Let's take the second y value, which is 6, and subtract it from the first y value, which is 3, and then place that over our x's. Well, we have the 2 and the 4 for that. We'll take the second x, which is 4, the first x, which is 1, and this simplifies into 3 over 2, which is also 1 and 5 tenths. So whether you count from the graph rise over run, or you were to calculate your change in y over your change in x, both times you get 1 and 5 tenths as your answer. But what does this mean? Well, slope is equal to 1 and 5 tenths. What does this mean? Well, the plant grows 1 and 5 tenths. 1 and 5 tenths what? Well, it's growing 1 and 5 tenths centimeters per week. In guided example two, Ronaldo opened a savings account. Each week he deposits $300. Draw a graph of the account balance versus time. Find the numerical value of the slope and interpret it in words. Well, you can see where they graphed. At zero weeks, he had zero dollars, but after two weeks he had 600, after four weeks he had 1,200, and so on. The slope of the line is that $300 per one week. Got it? Jessica has a balance of $45 on her cell phone account. She adds $10 each week for the next four weeks. In the work zone, graph the account balance versus time. Find the numerical value of the slope and interpret it in Word. Let's move on over here. Jessica has a balance of $45. She adds $10 each week for the next four weeks. So as we zoom in on this graph, that first week, she is at $45. And then she adds $10 each week the next four weeks. And so she's going to go up to 55, which is right around here, to 65 and 75. And so here is our line. Now what was the slope? Well the point where we started was one week $45 balance. The next point was two weeks and a $55 balance. And if we are looking for our change in y over our change in x, our change in y was 55 minus 45 over 2 minus 1. So 10 over 1, which is just our $10 deposit each week. And that is it for this lesson on slope. Good luck.